So I've talked about uh, Spike's relationship with uh, Rarity in a previous video and uh, then a bit later I talked about his relationship with pretty much all the other main characters, mainly Rainbow Dash though. So uh, by popular demand I've decided to do a third video on Spike uh, focusing on his relationship with uh, Twilight Sparkle which is probably the strongest bond of uh, any two characters on the show. So yeah, it is a pretty complex uh, kind of uh, relationship that the two of them have. Uh, it seems to me to be a sort of hybrid of uh, three separate things. Brother and sister, mother and son, and a worker and secretary, I suppose. Twilight being the worker and Spike being the secretary or butler or whatever the hell you want to call it. Servant, maybe, actually would be a, a better uh, way of describing it. But yeah, it is kind of a difficult thing to figure out their kind of relationship. There does seem to be a sort of a lot of very sort of complex and difficult sort of different elements uh, to their relationship. Now we see in the uh, Cutie Mark Chronicles uh, that uh, Twilight has owned Spike since he was hatched, uh, and uh, we can see in that flashback that uh, he's much more of a sort of baby-like dragon. I know he's still a baby dragon now, but he's much more sort of baby-like. Uh, in the flashback we see, he, he doesn't appear to be talking or sort of as aware of the stuff going on around him and he's sucking on his tail. He's, he's very much sort of like a human baby. So I have to believe that for at least the first few months of Spike's life, Twilight probably did have to care for Spike as a mother, basically. So I think it's very safe to say that uh, there is definitely a very much a mother-son relationship uh, or elements to their relationship. But uh, as we see, you know, the older Spike now, he's he's got a much more, more sort of cocky kind of attitude, and he, he does seem to have this sort of confidence with Twilight that he maybe doesn't have with any of the other five, that he can sort of tease her or joke with her or be sort of brutally honest with her about things and talk about her personal life in a much more sort of personal way than he does do with any of the other five. Because, of course, he's known Twilight for a lot longer. He's known her since, uh, you know, she lived in Canterlot. There's kind of a, an interesting kind of brother-sister kind of element, you know, that, that kind of relationship that you have with someone that's kind of the same age as you, maybe, uh, but uh, they're not quite like, your cut, like the kind of relationship you'd have with your cousins or maybe people you know at school or even people you work with, because you've known them your whole life, basically. Well, Spike has known Twilight his whole life. Twilight has not known Spike her whole life. Uh, so there's also the sort of complicated sort of brother-sister element to it. It's, Kind of sort of similar kind of relationships that uh, mother and son and brother sister relationship. You know, so certainly when you get older, I think uh, any anyone with siblings probably knows that your relationship with your parents becomes much more like the relationship with your siblings because you do sort of feel like you're more sort of their equal. But once you get grown up, anyway, you know your parents no longer have the power to order you about. But at the same time, there are kind of times when I. Th is ordered about by Twilight uh, very much like a mother. Uh, Owl's world that ends well, I think. It's what Twilight basically gives Spike a telling off, you know, for trying to frame Aloysius and all that uh, kind of stuff going on. Uh, and then the sort of childish-like nature that sometimes that uh, you see from Spike is sort of insensitive remarks and Twilight will school Spike uh, for what he's done now and again. But then you also see uh, a lot of other times Spike basically acts as uh, Twilight's lackey or butler or assistant uh, in many areas. He makes maybe breakfast for Twilight, he'll help her out with various errands she's going on, uh, or you know just various events going on around Ponyville that Twilight happens to be involved with. She'll have Spike at her side helping her out. That's very much sort of not something you would associate with uh, being brothers and sisters or uh, mother and son. It's, that's more of a sort of employee type relationship, the sort of relationship you'd only really have with someone who you only know because they work for you, their staff, basically. A co-worker, maybe, you might have that kind of relationship with them, maybe someone who's below you or something. So it's a very sort of different kind of element to their relationship than you would think of. Uh, uh, but you do very much sort of see very much that Spike feels differently about Twilight than he does with any of the other five. You see, you see a few scenes uh, where Spike is riding on Twilight's back. Uh, you never see T Spike riding on the back of any of the other five. I think that's maybe sort of an unwritten kind of thing. It, it's like, you know, just sort of feeling that you can embrace someone that you know very well, but you, you kind of feel you can't really embrace or hug someone you don't know particularly well. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing, you know. Spike just knows 
you know, without it even being said that it's okay for him to ride on Twilight's back, but it's not okay for him to ride on the back of somebody who maybe isn't a family member or someone he hasn't known for his whole life. Uh, you see, I think in Owl's World that ends well, Sweetie Belle climb on uh, Rarity's back and Apple Bloom climb on Applejack's back, so that's kind of more sort of emphasising it, you know. With uh, family members it's okay to do something like that, but with non-family members it maybe isn't okay. So, I think at their heart, Twilight and Spike do see each other as family. But I think really the best way to sort of explore this kind of relationship and give us a better idea of what kind of relationship it is, I think what we really need from season three is a flashback episode. I think we need to see what Twilight and Spike's relationship was like in the very early stages of Spike's life. Uh, and uh, ever since uh, Shining Armor, obviously Twilight's relationship with him emerged in uh, A Canterlot Wedding. That's also kind of uh, got me sort of thinking about, you know, the kind of relationship Twilight has with Spike. How Twilight sees Spike. I think it's very obvious that Spike sees Twilight as like a mother or an older sister and someone he looks up to constantly. Because she is someone he's known his whole life. But Spike is not someone Twilight has known her whole life. Uh, and obviously she actually does have an older brother. Obviously Spike would be the equivalent of a younger brother, I guess. But it, I'd kind of be interested to see again, you know, if, if they were to bring Shining Armor back, you know, kind of give us a, a better idea of how she compares her relationship with Shining Armor to her relationship with Spike. You know, d does she... S have a stronger bond with Shining Armor as she does with Spike, is it a stronger bond perhaps? You know, she obviously um, values her relationship with Shining Armor very much so. Never really get the impression that Twilight genuinely cares for Spike, she just sort of has him there and sort of appreciates the work that he does. I'm not quite sure if I've ever really seen any stage which indicates, you know, maybe that Twilight, you know, is worried that Spike might leave one day or that she's worried Spike doesn't love her anymore. You know, we see that Spike very much values Twilight. You know, we see in Owl's World that ends well. Uh, there's that one moment where Spike says, she doesn't love me anymore, and he's genuinely upset about this. Never really seen that from Twilight in the way that she feels about Spike, but the moment she becomes worried that Shining Armor, he's, he's not thinking of her, uh, and having the same kind of value of her as a sister, uh, when she's worried that... Uh, he hasn't told her about the fact that he's getting married. She becomes sort of very worried. So I think when it comes to someone that you've known your whole life, you do sort of feel a little bit differently about that. So perhaps the fact that Twilight has not known Spike her whole life, maybe there's a little bit of a sort of one-sided element to their relationship. Maybe it is just very much that Spike values Twilight more than Twilight values Spike, I wonder. Again, I think a flashback episode would be... Uh, a good idea to sort of better explore this. I think you know, uh, we had that sort of, we had sort of a flashback episode in the Cutie Mark Chronicles in season one, but that was more sort of six flashbacks. It was really much more about what it meant in the present day. They all came to realize that they had this sort of special connection. What I really want to see is, you know, an episode that is entirely a flashback and the story isn't really about anything that happens in the present day. The present day story would be essentially just uh, maybe Twilight just saying, oh, well, this is what happened when me and Spike first met. And then there'd be a flashback and that would be the whole episode and then they come back at the end of the episode. So that's the story of me and when me and Spike first met. And that would be it as far as the present day story would be concerned. The whole story, basically, would be the flashback. I'd, I'd really like to see that because you know, we haven't seen an episode like that yet. Uh, in the show, you know, the Cutie Mark Chronicles is the closest thing we've come to a flashback of any kind, really. And actually, on the subject of flashbacks, I think something else I want to see from a flashback is maybe something that explores Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy's relationship, because as far as I'm aware, they are the only two of the main six that actually knew each other as fillies. So it'd be very interesting to see what their relationship is like. Are they much closer than any of the other main six are? You know, it'd just be nice maybe to see uh, a bit more of Candelot. You know, it's been kind of underrepresented uh, generally over the course of the show. This is where Twilight and Spike grew up. What was their life growing up like? Did Spike know Shining Armor? I wonder. You know, was was uh, maybe maybe Twilight had moved out of her, her home um, by the time Spike was born, and perhaps you know Spike never actually met Shining Armor, gone to college or something, and uh, you know maybe Spike never actually knew Shining Armor. We'd never don't. I certainly don't recall in a Canterlot wedding at any point in 
either of the two parts at any point when Shining Armor and Spike interacted with one another. So uh, that would be something else I'd, I'd be interested to, uh, to explore, you know. What is Twilight's relationship with Shining Armor like in comparison to her relationship with Spike? And what is Spike's relationship with Shining Armor like, if there even is one? Have they ever actually met and interacted at any point? So, uh, yeah, it's definitely something worth exploring in Season 3, I think, is uh, a flashback episode, maybe, that focuses on Twilight and Spike's relationship in the first few months of Spike being born, and maybe give us a bit more of an idea of what her relationship with Shining Armor is in comparison to her relationship with Spike, and maybe what Spike's relationship with Shining Armor is like. I'm n not quite sure if it's mother and son, servant and worker perhaps you know spike does a lot of things that you would never picture a, a younger brother or a son doing for you i'm not sure it's you know it's not like spike and rarity i don't think it's going to evolve into anything more than what it is already but it is something i'd like to see uh explored a little bit more i'm trying to think other than owl's world and Enswell, have we had any episodes that really focus on it it's, it's, it's always sort of there in the background but it's never really a, other than owl's world and ends well it's never really been explored that much. A lot of people don't like Owl's World that ends well for some reason. I, I thought it was pretty good, actually. In fact, I think it's one of my favourites. Let me know what you guys think. Twilight and Spike, are they more like mother and son, or are they more like brother and sister? Or are they neither? Are they just maybe two people that happen to live together? Flatmates, basically. Okay, that's all i got to say about that, guys. See ya.